This website has 80,000 views per minute. This is more than 11,000 hours of watched content per minute. Also, more than 20,000 videos are uploaded daily. In today's video, we will do a basic system design of the most famous adults website. Follow me on the screen. I advise you to read this post on Hacker News, which contains a lot of useful content on this topic. And yeah, it's fun to see that there is a boring, more or less, tech stack, but if it works, it works. All right, we just opened diagrams.net and we can start with two main use cases. The first one is from the creator and we want to give the creator the ability to add the new content. And then from the user perspective, we want to have the ability to watch that content. So let's focus for now on the creator side of things. So we will import a new creator, a new actor. Now, the entry point for our creator will probably be an application load balancer. In this case, I'm using the icons from AWS services, but no worries because on the bottom of each icon, I will add what that icon is. So for example, here we have an application, well, just a load balancer. First of all, our creator in order to upload a new video needs to be authenticated. So we need an authentication service or something. We can go in the authentication through the load balancer. Our creator will go on the load balancer. And this authentication, how can this work? Uh, well, on services like YouTube and so on, you just need to be authenticated. This means that you need to have a username and a password and you can upload everything. On adults website is slightly different. Uh, the creator needs to be verified. This means that there is a KYC process. And here we have, for example, an external service, which will perform the KYC for us, which is know your customer. And would be something like this. And probably since this is an external service, we can use, yeah, an arrow like that. Once the user is authenticated and verified, then can upload a new content. And we can create this new service, which will be the content upload service. Well, without service. Okay. Now, how can this work? Uh, first of all, we need to provide stuff like title, description, I guess also thumbnail. And of course, we need to provide our video, our content. Uh, we will store our content in a bucket, so it can be an S3 or the buckets from uh, Google Cloud Platform or Azure and so on. So this content upload will communicate with the bucket here. All right, what happens once we upload the file? We need to process it, you know, we need to transcode the video to make it watchable from any kind of device in different qualities. And of course, we want to have something standard. For example, I upload an MP4 or a different file. We want to have all the files in a single format. So that's what happens. We have a transcoding service, which uh, can be an external service or can be, for example, a managed service like uh, Transcode, yeah, Elasti Elastic Transcoder from AWS, but it can also be an external service like from an external provider or we can create our transcoder. It's up to us. Now, how can the content upload service and the transcoding communicate? Well, here we need to decouple these two things. In order to do that, we will for sure use a queue. Probably we can use uh, something like SQS or Kafka. Let me reorganize everything. <laughs> Once the transcoding is done, for sure we want to save the result on a different S3 bucket, which will be probably the destination for our files. Yeah, and we are ready to go. Uh, just to summarize what we are doing here, we have just two main services, one for authentication, one for content upload. And in the content upload, we upload the file on an S3 bucket or a different bucket. We use a queue in order to decouple the content upload service and the transcoding service. From the queue, we will pull new jobs. And here we will have a transcoding pool of workers. And once the job is finished, we just put everything into a destination S3 bucket. Now you may be asking, okay, but how many of these transcoding workers do I need? Well, we can assume that we have 
x videos per minute uploaded and that we take on average a number of minutes to process them so that we can have a kind of prediction of how many workers do we want to have or we can scale with number of messages in the queue. For example, I can say, okay, uh, once I reach this number of messages in the queue, I want to scale and to add more transcoding workers. This works really well because, you know, you don't need to know in advance how many files do you need to process. Of course, everything is baked by a database, which can be, for example, RDS. Uh, we also know that Pranab and this kind of websites are using a cache like Redis or, well, Elasticache. Yeah, like this. So each service, the content upload service, the transcoding service, and the authentication service, they are probably connected both to the database and to the cache in this way. Okay, just to not repeat everything, we will say that each time we have a block like this, which is a service, we will have a connection like this. So I will not repeat this connection for every service, but every time you see a service, it is probably connected to a database and to a caching system. Okay, now that we covered the major point for our creator, we can cover the watch use case. Let me import a new actor, which will be the watcher. I'm not sure if that's correct, but anyway, in this case, what we want to do, we want to get our file. In order to get our file, of course, we need to enter through the website from the load balancer. And then we will have, for example, like a search service, uh, recommended videos or something. And we will probably have a detailed service, detail to get the information of a certain video. We don't know if they are using a monolith or uh, microservices under the hoods. This is just a logical split. Even if they have just one application server with everything inside, this is more or less from a logical point of view how things are divided. Okay, now you may be thinking, well, but I have the video, I have the information about the details of the video. What I can do, I can just go inside this bucket and I can see everything. Uh, for sure, that's an option. You can just go to the, bucket, to the bucket and generate, for example, a present URL to that specific video. But when you have a large amount of traffic, that's not the best. You would like to use something like CloudFront or a CDN, more generally speaking, so that you can do a connection with a, a CloudFront distribution. Also, the watcher has a connection with the authentication because maybe uh, there are a few uh, premium services or stuff like that. So we want to give the user also a normal watcher the ability to be authenticated as a user. Then we also have, uh, for example, a payment system, which can be connected, of course, with external systems or can be integrated directly inside the main system. That's up to them. Of course, the payment system is also connected to the creator, like on YouTube and other content creation platforms. All right, and here we are. So as you can see, it is more or less simple, it is more or less standard. There is nothing fancy. The most important thing that you need to remember on these types of website is the scale. Of course, they do not have a single database. They will have for sure a database which is a master and they will have uh, different replicas of that database. Uh, of course, also the cache helps a lot in that. The CDN helps a lot. So you may remember that even if these kind of systems seems to be more or less straightforward, they are really complex from a performance point of view. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you want to see more system design examples like this or other websites, feel free to write a comment below. And I will see you in the next video.